Hello and welcome to Socialism, the weekly Marxist podcast from the Socialist Party. Boris Johnson has won a majority in the UK's general election. Many workers and young people will understandably be feeling gloomy and angry. We say the fight back starts here. This episode of Socialism responds to the Tories' return. Stand firm for socialist policies. Hello, I'm Sarah Sachs Eldridge. I'm the national organiser of the Socialist Party. It's the Friday morning after the general election 2019. I'm here with Hannah Sell, who's the Deputy General Secretary of the Socialist Party. Good morning. Hey, Hannah. So, we've got a lot to discuss this morning. This is our initial podcast after the election. Initial responses. We've had Johnson come out this morning after his results, saying this is now a people's government. What can we expect? <laughs> I mean, first of all, this definitely is an initial discussion. I'm sure we're going to have a lot more to say about what's going to happen in the next few months than we're going to manage today. But obviously, we've either woken up to or sat through the night and watched Johnson win quite a substantial parliamentary majority. Mm -hmm. And listening to his victory speech this morning, it was all about being the people's government, how he was going to rule for the whole nation. He was a one-nation conservative. He was going to spend money on the National Health Service. And look, no question... There will be workers around the country who lent Johnson their vote, mm -hmm. perhaps voting Tory for the first time, mm -hmm. who will be hoping that what he said was true. Mm -hmm. But it's a lie. Yeah. And most of us are probably too young to remember it. I can just about remember it. But when Maggie Thatcher won in 1979, she didn't stand on the steps of Downing Street and say, I am going to attack the working class. I'm going to try and break the miners' union. I'm going to introduce the poll tax. She quoted Francis of Assisi and exactly. said she was going yeah. to bring harmony and hope and peace to Britain. And we know what she did. Johnson will not rule for the whole nation. He will rule for the billionaires, for the super rich elite. And actually, I mean, his manifesto said hardly anything. Yeah. But one of the things it did say was an attack on the right of rail workers to strike so that they're not able to have effective strikes. Mm -hmm. And that is a bit of an indication, combined with the undemocratic ruling against the CWU, mm -hmm. stopping them coming out on strike legally before the general election, of what this government is going to try and do. It is going to attack the working class. Mm -hmm. But it can be defeated. We should be clear about that. Right now, this morning, lots of people who didn't go out and vote for Johnson are going to be very angry and very upset yeah. because they know what a Johnson government is going to mean. Mm -hmm. But this is a Pyrrhic victory. Mm -hmm. He himself recognised that many workers had just lent him their vote mm -hmm. and they're going to be disappointed by what they get from Johnson. And the seeming strength of his government, still based on a very divided Tory party, is going to be shattered in the course of events. We should remember, in 1987, this was an election where I was active and campaigning, in 1987, Thatcher won a majority of 102. And the left at the time, many of them, not us, but many said, that's it, it's over, there's nothing we can do. Mm -hmm. A year later, our organisation started the campaign against the poll tax, the iniquitous tax that mm -hmm. Thatcher had introduced, or everybody, no matter how much money they had, had to pay the same. 18 million people in the end didn't pay that tax and Thatcher was forced out of office in 1990. And that, by the way, was at a time when there were much deeper social roots for capitalism mm -hmm. and for their party, the Tory party, than is true in Britain today after 10 years of austerity mm -hmm. and capitalist crisis. So I suppose the other point I'd make is just what we need to do about it immediately because there's no question there's going to be eruptions of anger, possibly even especially from young people, very quickly. Anger is great, but it's not enough. Mm. We need to harness and organise that anger. So in the Socialist Party, we're campaigning that the workers' movement, the trade unions, need to immediately come together, have a council of war, if you like, mm. in order to plan and discuss how to harness the anger that exists and to fight back against the attacks that are coming from Johnson. And immediately, that's going to mean defending the right of the CWU to strike, the right of the RMT to strike, not to accept the anti-union legislation that already exists and the further legislation Johnson will try to introduce. And there's been a whole load of discussion, hasn't there, already through the night? You've watched some of it, I've watched some of it. It's 
you know, grim to watch. It is. But it just Blairite after Blairite after Blairite coming on and saying it's Corbyn's fault, it's Corbyn's fault, this manifesto was too radical, people don't like it, all of this stuff. I mean, obviously, we've been on the streets, we've seen that there's support for it. But do you think overall that's true, that Corbyn's manifesto just turned people off and pushed them towards the Tories? No, I think it's total, utter nonsense. Yeah. And a big part of what we have to do in the Socialist Party now is fight in defence of a socialist programme. Mm. In the labour movement over the last decades, it's a kind of cliché by the right to say that Michael Foote's election manifesto, which was a left-wing manifesto in 1983, mm. was the longest suicide note in history. In reality, the Tory vote went down in that election mm -hmm. and it was a right-wing split from the Labour Party, the Blairites of their day, mm -hmm. the SDP, mm -hmm. who split the Labour vote and resulted in Labour's vote being low. But the myth was established. Mm -hmm. It was because of the left-wing manifesto. And they're trying to do the same this time. But it just isn't true. Corbyn got more than 10 million votes yesterday. Now, that was lower than he got in 2017, but that was the first time since 2001 that any Labour leader has got over 10 million votes. So Brown never managed it. Miliband never managed it. And Blair didn't manage it after 2001. So, you know, let's be clear, their Blairite manifesto would have got fewer votes exactly. than Corbyn got in this election. And it just, it makes you want to smash the telly. It really does. Yeah. When you hear them going all night, they've been going, well... If you have these throwback 1970s ideas, they don't apply to people's lives today. It's inevitable that it's unpopular. What are they talking about? Yeah. So how, after a decade of austerity, does banning zero-hour contracts or giving free education or council house building or rent controls or a £10 an hour minimum wage, how do they not apply to people's lives? Of course they do. Yeah. And they're enormously popular. And so were the nationalisation policies that Corbyn put forward. Even with some of them, not all, but with rail, for example, yeah. even a big majority of Tory voters yeah, yeah. support rail nationalisation. And with all of them, a majority of the population as a whole support them. So they were popular policies with the majority, of course, not with the capitalist class. Mm -hmm. They were terrified of a Corbyn government. And they've really gone to town to try and prevent a Corbyn government with the smears, the lies that have been told. Mostly they were terrified, not just because of the policies themselves, but because of the hope it would have engendered in people if you'd had a government that was trying to implement that kind of programme. And they were frightened that people would say, this is great and we want a bit more and would fight to go further in the direction of socialist policies. Absolutely. I mean, I think that vicious campaign of, of slander, of smears, of lies, of biased reporting definitely played a role. But do you think there's more to it about why Corbyn lost? Do you think there's other factors involved here as well? Yeah, definitely. After all, we're not surprised by those lies and slander. So we're not saying, therefore, that you can't win mm. if you've got left-wing policies, because there's always going to be, you know, the, the Sun, the rest of them, the BBC, they're going to be having a go at you if yes. you've got yeah, yeah. left-wing policies. Probably this was the worst since 1945. And that's going some. And that's going some. Yeah. And then there were headlines saying... Gestapo camps will be set up. This is at the end of the Second World War in Britain if Labour wins and so on and so forth. But of course, Labour did win. Mm. So what it shows is you can overcome mm. the attacks from the right-wing media. This time, there were other factors. Mm. We already mentioned the Blairites. Mm, mm, mm. But they were a very big factor in this election. 15 ex-Labour MPs on the day before the election, so ones who've just left the Labour Party over the recent months, took out huge adverts in the Northern Papers where they thought it would have the most effect, saying, don't trust Corbyn, don't vote for him, effectively calling for a vote for Boris Johnson. Yeah. That was the reality of yeah. it. These were scabs, strike breakers. But it wasn't just them. Yeah. There was still a lot of Blairites inside the Labour Party who were standing as Labour candidates, but who never mentioned the manifesto in their material, mm. either didn't mention Corbyn at all, or in some cases distanced themselves from Corbyn in their leaflets that they were giving out on the doorstep. Mm. So there was a big obstacle there as well that had to be overcome. But like you said, they will always exist. Mm. We're always going to have two classes contending in an election. And you're right, of course, because in some form or other, 
the capitalist class are always going to try and sabotage a left party mm. and use any politicians they can put pressure on. Mm. In this case, they don't need to put any pressure on the Blairites. <laughs> exactly. they're, they're very happy to back capitalist policies. But you're always going to have those problems playing out. But in our view, the central reason that the Blairites were able to have an effect in this election were not their inevitable and vicious attacks on Corbyn. Mm. The biggest reason was the policy compromises that were made by the left of the Labour Party in the hope of trying to pacify the Blairites, which of course never worked. They mm. kept attacking them. Mm -hmm. But they, they had a real effect on the election. And above all, that's on Brexit. I mean, everybody's seen all night... The seats that were traditional Labour seats that went Tory were overwhelmingly seats where there was a big vote for Brexit. And in the Socialist Party, we've explained all along that the working class vote for Brexit at base was a revolt against everything they'd suffered, particularly in the 10 years previously of economic crisis, but actually going back over decades of austerity, of misery, of job losses, of deindustrialisation. People were angry and they expressed it in that referendum and unfortunately many of those workers in this election saw Labour as a Remain party mm -hmm. and actually so Dominic Lawson who's a Sunday Times commentator yeah. uh, who's the son of Nigel Lawson he's Tory he's no friend of ours but he had a correct article in the Sunday Times last week and the headline was Labour centrists he means right wingers mm. blew this not its lefty leaders and he Unusual points out, honesty. yeah, it's the centrist supported by Labour leader Tony Blair and his erstwhile spin doctor Alistair Campbell who dragged the party from respecting the result of the 2016 referendum. And he correctly goes on to point out, Corbyn never supported the EU. Mm -hmm. He had a long history of having the same position as the Socialist Party, of arguing that the EU was a bosses club, mm -hmm. driving through anti-working class, neoliberal, pro-privatisation laws, and he voted against those again and again in Parliament. But when he first became Labour leader, he came under huge pressure to support the EU, even to get any of them into his shadow cabinet, and he gave in to that pressure. If he'd done differently, mm -hmm. if he had put his own real position in that EU referendum... It never would have left the room for the right-wing populists to step in in the way they did and try and harness that anger that was expressed by the Brexit vote in the EU referendum. But even after that, there was room to pull it back. Mm. And we saw that in 2017. Well, you know, Labour took a position, we'll respect the referendum result. And it's true, there were an undermining of Labour's vote in some of the seats that have now gone Tory. But at the same time, there were others coming back the other way. That's there right. were a million people who'd voted UKIP before who voted Labour in that election. Mm -hmm. This time, under pressure from the Blairites, he'd gone even further with this position of neutrality, which was a stupid position to take, frankly. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the big majority of the shadow cabinet, unfortunately increasingly including figures on the left like John McDonnell, were openly arguing for Remain. Mm. In Parliament, the party blocked for a whole period with the likes of Jo Swinson, and that's one bit of good news yeah. from last night, <laughs> that is. she lost her seat. Yeah. A woman who voted for austerity more times than Ian Duncan Smith yeah. in the course of the coalition government. But blocking with the likes of them, Ken Clark, you know, Tory politicians, to block Johnson, but in many workers' minds... Johnson's claim then that Labour was standing with the establishment and he was standing for the people. I mean, it's nonsense, yeah. but it was bound to have an effect when you'd made those kind of mistakes. So that was a big factor in this election. Mm -hmm. But there were other factors as well. I mean, it was noticeable much more than in 2017. They'd obviously come to a deal, and McDonald said it at one point, where they'd agreed not to attack the record of previous Labour governments. Mm -hmm. You see, what does that mean? One of the TV debates, Johnson, actually, I think it was the last one, came after Corbyn saying, but it was Labour that introduced most of the private finance initiative into the National Health Service. And that was true, wasn't but it? But it was true. Yeah. But Corbyn voted against it all. Yeah. He didn't support any of that. Mm -hmm. He took a principled position. But instead of saying that and attacking Tony Blair, yeah. in order to preserve this unity, he allowed himself to be associated with the rotten record of new Labour and that was a big mistake mm. 
And then the other thing which is really important is the question of the councils. Absolutely. It was you, living experience of what Labour means. Exactly. And, you know, if you listen to Socialist Party podcasts, you'll have heard us go on about <laughs> this quite a lot. But it's a massive issue. Yeah. We've had 40 years of new Labour and Tory governments that have attacked the living standards of the working class. It is not reasonable to expect people to believe your anti-austerity just because you say so. Mm. After all those years of being driven into the ground, people want to see a bit of proof. Yeah. And yet every Labour council around the country was still implementing austerity, carrying out the Tory cuts. Mm. So, for example, in the West Midlands, I think, which is obviously one of the areas where the Tories have made big gains, there have been 20,000 local government workers made redundant since 2010, mostly by Labour councils. And that's youth workers, care workers, yeah. all the services that people really, really need and have lost. And just imagine if there'd been even one or two Labour councils who'd done what we did in Liverpool, where, by the way, the swing to Labour in 1987, after we'd been in the leadership of that council, and we'd said it's better to break the law than break the poor, we'd taken on Thatcher, we defeated her, we built 5,000 council houses... As the late, great Tony Mulhern said, it was the language of socialism in bricks and mortar. Yeah. That's what we did. Yeah. And the swing to Labour in Liverpool in 1987, had it been repeated nationally, would have led to a Labour majority government instead of Thatcher having 102 majority. So it works. If there'd been just one or two councils that had done that and Jeremy Corbyn had said, that's what we support, mm -hmm. not the austerity, it would have completely transformed the political situation. 100%. 100%. And I think I just need to mention sure, Scotland yeah, yeah. because yes, yes, of course, you, you know, it's a wipeout. It is a complete wipeout. Back to one MP, yeah. and the anti-austerity message would have hit home in Scotland because the SNP are implementing austerity. Yeah, but there was a proviso. Labour had to say we will respect the right to self-determination of the Scottish people. And you can vote for independence if you want to, and we will respect that. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that wasn't Labour's position, and that was also, I think, a big mistake in what's just taken place in Absolutely. the election. So that's what's happened. That's some of why it's happened. But the Socialist Party is not just for analysis, is it? It's not just for describing processes. Yes, we need to do it because they're underneath the surface. They're not being talked about elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But what now? Yeah, I mean, that's the most important question. The most important thing is what we do now in the wake of this defeat. And obviously, you know, the Labour right are baying for blood. Mm. Corbyn's got to go immediately. That's what they're saying. Everything's the fault of Corbyn. And it would be a big mistake if the Corbynistas were to give an inch to that onslaught. Carry on the fight. Absolutely. And do learn the lessons over the last four years. And the lessons are not, let's compromise with these people, let's make concessions to them. The lessons are, put a clear programme, take it to the working class, stand up to the Blairites and fight for what you believe in. And that is really what they've got to do now. And involve the working class as well, isn't it? Definitely. I think now we think in the Socialist Party there should be an urgent conference of the workers' movement. Mm -hmm. And by that, we mean the people on the left of the Labour Party who want to fight for socialist policies, but we also mean the trade unions, and we mean people like the Socialist Party. Yeah. We were out on the street campaigning for Corbyn's programme. We, were. we want to go further, but we thought it was a step forward, so we went out and put it to people. But we had Labour stalls next to us that had nothing but balloons and leaflets saying, vote Labour for some unknown reason. So, you know, we should be involved in that conference, mm. and that should be discussing how Labour can be refounded with a clear socialist programme. And it's the democratisation of the party, mm -hmm. so giving the trade unions power back in the Labour Party. Things that Blair took away, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. Organising it on a federal basis, that's the origins of the Labour Party, that it was a coming together of different mm -hmm. workers' movement organisations in a common cause. Mm -hmm. Doing that again, including allowing organisations like the Socialist Party and others to affiliate and to argue for our ideas within the umbrella of the Labour Party, mandatory reselection, deal with the Blairites, get them out. Mm. Those things are essential 
But it's not just organisational measures. No. It's the political will to fight for that programme, to stop compromising, to say we will no longer accept MPs and councillors who are pro-austerity and pro-capitalist in our party. We're going to be a party that is genuinely for the working class organising around a socialist programme. Now, that's what needs to happen now. They're the lessons that need to be learned. And the Socialist Party will be moving might and main to try and ensure that that is what takes place. And we need more people to join us then, don't we? We absolutely Get this do. message out. Yeah. And what this is about for us, it's about fighting for a mass party of the working class. The working class needs political representation. Unfortunately, under Corbyn, Labour didn't become that. Mm. At best, it was two parties in one. The capitalist Blairite party and a potential workers' party around Jeremy Corbyn. Now the lessons have got to be learned to transform Labour into a workers' party. But if that isn't done, if, and this would be a big mistake, the Corbynites step back, accept that they've done things wrong, that they were too left-wing, and swallow some of the nonsense that's been talked at the moment, if that happens, it won't alter the need for a mass workers' party. And in the Socialist Party, we will be fighting for that because... We can see the onslaught that's coming from the capitalist class, the onslaught coming from the Tories, against the background of a growing economic crisis exactly. where who knows what Johnson will actually do on Brexit. The capitalist class are going to be pushing him now to compromise, to be prepared to negotiate for longer, to get a deal rather than crashing out of the EU. So illusions that he's just going to get Brexit done mm -hmm. could well be shattered from that point of view. But I tell you what, whatever Brexit he delivers, however he does it, it's not going to be a Brexit for the working class. No. It's going to be a brutal anti-working class Brexit against the background of a growing economic crisis. And we need a political vehicle to fight back. And by whatever means, the Socialist Party will be fighting for that kind of mass workers party. But we also say, as you said, if you agree with what you're listening to today, what you're reading on our website, join us in this fight. Because we need as many people as possible arguing around these clear ideas and arguing in working class communities and workplaces to fight back to defend ourselves against the attacks that are coming so if you agree sorry my voice is starting to go <laughs> you should join the socialist party <laughs> okay thank you very much hannah and like hannah said join us get involved if you agree with what we're putting forward get involved in building a political voice for the working class in building the struggle against the tories in fighting for socialism Socialism is produced by the Socialist Party, the England and Wales section of the Committee for a Workers' International. This week we heard from Hannah Sell speaking to Sarah Sachs Eldridge, and I'm James Ivans. If you agree with the policies and actions the Socialist Party in England and Wales is fighting for, we need you. Join our campaign to build a truly effective fighting force in the trade unions and labour movement to bring down the Tories and win socialist policies. Join the Socialist Party now. Send us your details at socialistparty.org.uk forward slash join. If you live outside England and Wales and want to join the fight for socialism in your country, contact the Committee for a Workers International by visiting socialistworld.net. Help us spread the word about socialism in the podcast by giving us a five-star review and subscribing so you don't miss out. Don't forget to recommend us to your co-workers and friends this very important episode in particular. We want you also to send us recordings from picket lines and campaigns and reports of your activity out in the struggle. And we want your questions, comments and ideas for future episodes. You can email socialismpodcast at socialistparty.org.uk. Socialism the podcast has no wealthy backers. We survive thanks to the financial support of ordinary working class and young people and we're proud of the political independence that gives us. So if you like what you hear, you can help us take the fight to big business. You can make a regular donation or a one-off payment at socialistparty.org.uk forward slash donate. Until next time, solidarity. <laughs>